Hi, my name is Red Panda 315 and this is my third time filming this video. It seems that after all of these breaks I'm taking, um, I continue to get worse and worse at making videos. Good thing to know that I, uh, you know, my peak quality, you know, the highest I ever could be on as a YouTuber, I peaked at what, probably like 40 subscribers ever since then, it's just been downhill. But anyway, we are back here with the July monthly awards program. And before we get into that, if you're new around here, click the subscribe button so uh, I have to make more content uh, for my subscribers. There you go. All right. I just figured I'd throw that in there. So the last two times I've uh, done this video, it's been like 26 minutes. How in the hell do I drag out a 26 minute video talking about five players in a program? I don't know. I'm just amazing, clearly. So first off, we're just going to go through the cards really quickly because uh, clearly I need to work on my uh, speed and efficiency. Jonathan Scope, one of the most underrated cards in this program, obviously is the lowest overall, but when you actually play with him, he's going to be a lot higher than uh, that 88 overall. Truthfully, when he plays, I kind of rate this card as like a 92 overall, and for a variety of reasons. First off, contact against right, or hitting against right-handers, 90 and 91. Pretty good, got some good pop in the bat. Against lefties, 81 and 88. So obviously has the reverse splits, but against right-handers, you're good with that. He's got 67 vision, not the best in the world. We're not too worried about that. He has a rocket at second base, so that'll really help at some of those, uh, you know, like those long animations, maybe that Jeter throw from, you know, from that second baseman. So really nice. Got a cannon there. You love to see it. 61 speed, good enough on the base pass, good enough in the field. So how does this 88 jump to a 92? In the second inning, there was a gold card, a gold Jonathan Scope. It was one of the the mini bosses or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Or maybe it's like the henchmen. I don't know what they're called. But what I do know is everybody loved his swing, his stance. It's so nice. MLB The Show just loves it for some reason. And he rakes. Just go look at any other big popular YouTuber. They, they love the swing. Now the other thing that boosts his overall is he's a second baseman. In this game, we've kind of had a lackluster. Um, well, not like a lackluster, but I think it's kind of... We all kind of know where the weaker positions are, and that's the middle infield. Everything else has really been jumped and boosted up. Obviously, with shortstop, you got some of the top guys like Barry Larkin. I think you got Ozzy Smith. So for some people, you might be hurting at second base because either all of the second basemen are bad, or they're really expensive, or, you know, because you haven't got Sandberg yet. Whatever the case may be. Jonathan Scope, good guy you can put in there. He's pretty solid off the bench, but overall, I think if you don't have a God Squad, he definitely can fit into your lineup as an everyday player. Pretty good. Plus, he's, in, uh, he's on the Orioles, and so I love to brag about my Orioles. Please, that's why you need to subscribe, because I'm an Orioles fan and not. Uh, just please help me. It's okay, because they're going to win the World Series this year. Yaz Money, Money and Grandal. It's a really good catcher. Another guy who I actually rate a little higher. I rate Grandal probably as like a 91, 92. At least he plays as a 90. Sometimes when you get these free cards, they don't play up to their overall. This is a card that uh, does not have that issue. Switch hitting catcher, always a good thing to see. Um, you, you just love switch hitting catchers. You had Adley Rutschman and Matt Weeder so far this year. Both two Orioles and both actually were pretty good. A lot of people really like that Matt Weiders card, and I never got to try it. Grindahl can also play first base, but nobody cares about that. He's a catcher. 90 uh, and 96 against righties. So again, we're talking about those good splits against righties. You see more right-handed pitchers, so you want those stats to be higher. 70 and 70, or 77 and 75 against lefties. So a bit of a dip there, but I think that's going to be good enough to hold on and, uh, you know... Make him not be a liability out there. 86 fielding, uh, 83 blocking. Pretty good at behind the backstop, 7 speed, so he's that really slow catcher. If you don't have a good catcher yet, you can probably pick this card up because this is another guy. A lot of people like his live uh, series gold card for uh, 
Battle Royale. A lot of people liked it last year, more so than this year, because this year you got Mitch Garver and Gary Sanchez. Both have really nice high power goal cards, and everybody likes high power. Grandal, really good swing, uh, just like Scope. A lot of people like it. Pretty good card. I'd rate it pretty high. Uh, if you don't have a good catcher yet, go ahead and throw him in there. Or a solid option is use him if you're looking for Dodgers. Uh, affinity stuff, you're trying to work for Oral Hershizer, and you need like those Dodger innings. It's just a great guy to throw in there because it'll help you out doing that. And he's got, you know, a cool little chest plate there. Big thing to know. Ramon Laureano. All right, so this was a card I did not expect. I just, you know, out of all the cards, I just never thought I'd see a really good Ramon Laureano. And honestly, I'm here for it. 97 and 96 versus right handers. Again, another guy who can hit righties pretty well. When it comes to left-handed pitchers, it gets a little weird. Really high contact of 109, not as much power as 70 at 73. So, uh. He looks more of a uh, prototypical center fielder versus left-handers. And against right-handers, he's just kind of a balanced bat overall. Pretty good hitting stats, if you ask me. But his real um, talent and value lies on the defense and the speed. 79 speed to go with a 99 arm strength and accuracy. He has 80 fielding and 89 reaction. Where can you use this card? This is a card you need to keep on your bench. He's not going to be very good as an everyday player uh, like Scope or Grandal. This is a guy you want to keep on your bench. He's going to be great for ranked seasons because you got guys like Reggie Jackson. Um, I'm trying to think. There's, you know, you've got cards out there in the outfield that hit but don't field. Loriano can hit a little bit, but they sure did. Sure as hell can field. He's going to be a great defensive replacement, especially in the late innings. 7th, uh, 8th, ninth inning. That's why you want it to be ranked seasons. You get him in there, and who knows? He can probably save you a few games, either with his uh, nasty arm or with the speed to help cover uh, you know, some spots in the outfield. Really good card, and uh, even if you throw him in there later in the game, and he comes up, it's his turn to hit. He still can produce pretty well. He's not he's not just going to be an automatic out up there. He actually can do really well, especially against those right-handers. Really solid card. Definitely, um, you know, you're trying to fill out your bench. You need a defensive guy in the outfield. Loriano is your best bet. Maybe not the best bet, but pretty solid. Edwin Diaz, we get our closing pitcher. Really nice bullpen arm, 95 overall. Don't really see him playing to that. I think he's going to fit more of a 92 to 93 just based off his pitch mix. Four-seam fastball, 97 miles per hour. He's going to get up to 99. Don't think he'll crack triple digits for you. But enough of you on that fastball to where you can miss with it and uh, still be all right. He's got a nice slider and a changeup. Now, one thing you are going to see is the slider and the changeup are very close in velocity. Now, some people think that's a bad thing. You always want guys like Earl Hershiser has a really big uh, pitch speed differential. Same thing with Zach Granke's card. You can still get away with Diaz if you pitch tunnel. If you use those two pitches and uh, use them together. So say you have a right-handed batter. You want to, obviously it's a right-handed uh, pitcher. You want to attack down and away um, to that batter. You want to throw the change up in the zone, down and away. You want to try to paint with it. Once you get the two strikes or you've thrown that change up enough and he's sitting on it, then you want to flip the slider down and away but out of the zone. The pitch speed's going to look the same. Uh, well, it's going to be the same. Pitchers or batters are going to think it's that changeup again. It's going to be in the zone. Since it's a slider, it slides right out of the zone. You've got a K. This card can be really good and really bad. Just depends on how you use it. If you're smart and methodical with Diaz, you'll be all right. Honestly, you probably want to use him more as a finesse pitcher than a power pitcher. 119 hits per nine, a 124 Ks per nine. So again, he could be really dominant. You just have to use him correctly. Not 99 break, 89 velocity. That's all I got to say. Diaz, going to be a beast, but those jerseys are whack. I mean, you know, I mean, it's cool. It's nice to see pink light bat, pink lightning 
bat skin. I'm trying to hurry up because I gotta go to work here in a little bit. Yeah, I know that sucks. Uh, everybody likes pink. If you don't, you're whack. James Paxton, 99 overall. When I first made the first two uh, videos of this, I didn't really think this card was gonna be the best. Now, no, that was not a voice crack there. We're not even gonna talk about it. 99 overall. Really thought he was gonna play more of a 96 to 97. Still have not seen a full proof of what he's pitched uh, pitched like yet, but from what I've heard, he's actually pretty dominant. Some people I have quote and said uh, that he's like the lefty Corey Kluber, he's really nice. So that's really good, like to hear it. Again, another guy, this time, he's got a high pitch, he got a lot of pitches to work with. Four seam cutter and sinker for his fastballs, knuckle curve and change up. So, how would I use this pitcher? Well, first off, when you look at his stats, nothing really stands out. You could maybe say the 107 hits per nine. He generally just seems like a balanced starting pitcher. That's good for me, because, well, looking at the stats, you know, they're really, really high. You're just saying. So, how would I use him? First off, you would take the cutter and the sinker. Anytime, and the new meta in this game is, everybody knows, best pitch sinker sinker's your best pitch this year well the second best pitch is if you have a sinker then if you have a cutter uh, that cutter is your second best pitch in the game why they break opposite of each other and oftentimes they're relative in pitch velocity so I'd use that sinker and cutter in tandem together um, really throw off the hitter one's gonna break to the left the other one's gonna break to the right it's just the the batter's not going to like it. Now, how to use that four-seamer? You're going to use that four-seamer up in the zone. You're not, honestly, I wouldn't use the four-seamer too much. I would use that as probably your third most used fastball. And instead, I'd use it as hard as you can, 99 miles per hour, to really mess with the batter's timing. Throw it up in the zone. He's either going to light up uh, and miss the ball, or you're going to get some weak contact. Knuckle curve and change up, both similar in velocity, but I think that knuckle curve, you definitely can get some swing and misses on uh, the batter being too anxious, maybe for that fastball or the sinker. This card is, uh, it's more of, a, I guess you would say, a deception card. You can really go in so many directions with this many uh, pitch, you know, with so many pitches. Um, you can't really say that with all cards that have five pitches because truthfully most of the time their mix isn't that good i really think this mix is one of the better ones and big maple is going to be really good for you uh, like i always say because you know as you progress through the year the cards always get better and stuff definitely the best program so far so how do we want to get uh, through all this I think the last time I counted it was like 10,000 subs it was like 13 standard packs and even there you really make some uh, bank so how do we get through well they kind of screw us here so you'll see with scope you're starting in stage one you get 15 points from the uh, moments but you come here and they change it it's plus eight now I don't know if that's how it used to be uh, but unfortunately you have to complete another mission so the first thing I would do is you want to play the Orioles on all-star but you want to make a full team out of Orioles and so the, the trick is you want to beat the Orioles on all-star but you want to tally 10 hits with Orioles in that game worst case scenario it should take you two games it took me two games because I just was not having a good day hitting uh, I was getting screwed on some balls so this is a solid option. This is what I would do. Now the good thing about this program is I actually earned 15, 23, 28 points in the first stage. So that carries over. So I had plus three in this stage. So as far as I know, I can play all of these and do this mission. Uh, just beat the Dodgers and I'll keep going. But as you continue to go through three extra base hits with scope, not that bad. Um, you just keep going through, you do all your moments, you do this mission, and you do this mission, um, you should be alright, you keep going through, it's going to be the easiest way to do it, uh, without paying stubs, if you want to pay stubs, go for it, but like, look, are you ready for this? For this stage, you play the Mariners and All-Star, when you beat them, you make sure you put Edwin Diaz in, if you're smoking them, just throw some crappy pitcher in, whoever, just give up a bunch of taters until it's a save opportunity, you throw Diaz in, bang, 13, plus 13 points for one game, that's it, that's so easy. 
And if you're dominating so much, you put Loriano at the top of your lineup. I mean, it's five hits. Not that bad. You can honestly even do that in two games if you couldn't manage it in one. Really not bad. Solid program. Definitely go out and do it. Uh, I hope this video was quick enough. If you haven't subscribed, do so. And, uh, you know, just take care and I hope to see you soon. Now I gotta go to work and then literally right after I have football. So I'm not going to have a fun day. But I hope you have a fun day. I wonder when this video is going to go out. Who knows?